Hi, I'm Justin. Also, I hate the way my voice sounds, so if you can like do whatever Photoshop does to voices, make me sound awesome. And this is my lovely friend. The beauty in the eyes of the beholder. And it's just about getting into the seat of being the beholder. Haley. I don't think you have to be particularly perceptive. I just think you have to look up. This podcast is mostly just her telling me stories. If you expose yourself to the possibility that this might be really awkward, there, there can be something just really cool on the other side of it. She thinks that her life and way of looking at things are... Oh, I thought I was kind of waiting on you. I thought you were getting your stuff ready. You're waiting on me? Pretty normal. You got to edit out all the misinformation about the Amish. Maybe you can relate. I would like a chance to re-sing the Amish paradise. <laughs> if you want lighthearted stories... All right, you want to talk about goats? ...and stream of consciousness... I just woke up and needed some friends, and so I bought them. Then you're going to like the Sunny Side Up podcast. Sunny Side Up, Sunny Side Up, Sunny Side Up, Sunny Side Up. So, if you're at all like me, you may feel that you're living in a world that can be a bit overwhelming and confusing at times. I'm also a huge fan of podcasts, documentaries, docudrama stories, and of just information in general. Between all of that and the social media and news, sometimes our brains can feel like they're on overload. Haley and I hope that this podcast can be something of an anecdote to all of that, like little jello shots of joy and distraction. None of it is too serious or really too informative. Mostly it's just two friends who have conversational chemistry talking about whatever enters the minds of relatively ADHD people. We hope you enjoy. You just have to be careful with your online shopping. Yeah? For barnyard animals. Fair. Because... Well, you just don't know where it's going to take you. That's all. You just have to be careful where it's going to take you and how much you're going to buy when you get there. you got to know your limits before you show up. You have to... Like a Vegas thing. Like, okay, here's how much I'm willing to lose. Here, how far I'm willing to go with this. That's right. Yeah, okay. Show up with all these exquisite peacocks in this place, and your child's like, I think I hear an African gray. And they're like, yep, we sell those too. And she's like, it's slightly illegal, but I'm very intrigued. (laughs) It's like, okay, we're not buying an African gray while we're here. Focus. One peacock, we're going home. Yeah, yeah. Overall, would you say that the decision to buy the peacocks has been a good one, though? Like, the strangled woman? I don't know. Everything worked out in all of these. Like, the turkey came from a parking lot. She was going to be somebody's holiday meal, but she failed to gain enough weight. And she'd Mm. been living in, like, this dirt pen. So, in a... Like, she was a rescue turkey in a a lot of ways. Now she is a a fat and happy, healthy bird Mm. and had her first, like, little hatch, clutch of eggs this year. And everything's going well for her and the very proud turkey father who, where did he, he came from a lush backyard. He came from, he had a good background, so no. He came from money and means, whereas she was a little more humble in her beginnings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. And Would you ever eat? Your animals? No. No. But I will eat other people's animals. No, no, I like... No, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just don't want to know it... Yeah, personally. ...ahead of time. Right. Yeah, that's fair. You don't want to know, like, it's Enneagram number, and then you're chomping on it. That's true. I'd rather not see it looking like an animal. If possible, mm. if it could have already unzipped it from its fur, and it just be, like, a little, little meat sack when you hand it to me, Yeah. I can... I can take it from there. Yeah. Like yeah. once you've disrobed the deer, bring me the parts and I can. Right. This is why, by the way, there's a, there is a, I don't know if it's a conspiracy, but there's an idea about the way we name what we eat. So the closer it is to like uh, something that we don't uh, ascribe with like much affection, i.e. chicken or fish, we just call it what it is. Like oh, this is chicken, this is turkey you're eating, uh, this is bass, this is catfish. When you get to things that are like, pigs and cows because they could potentially be a pet and they're a little bit like whatever you don't say hey i'm going to feed you pig tonight we call it a hot dog or sausage or (laughs) pork right and we call we call cows beef and i think yeah the idea is is that we don't really want to name what we're eating when it's something that we can like Oh, I really liked Bessie. She was my best cow for a long time. You know, yeah. yeah. That, no, that actually, I think that that's probably more accurate than we'd like to admit. We yeah. don't say we're eating dog. We say we're eating Chinese. <laughs> 
Uh, by the way, I believe that's Vietnamese that eat their dogs, but nevertheless. I'm not so sure. Like my really? uncle, I think they I think they might both possibly. Okay. My uncle just sent a picture when he was living in China and the restaurant had a golden retriever on the side. <laughs> it was like, oh no. Oh no. Oh, such well, a good I remember breed. specifically uh, when uh, I was a kid growing up, my dad had hired a couple of Vietnamese gentlemen. And, like, this is not even a joke. Like, there was a loose dog in the neighborhood. And one of them became very interested in the loose dog. Like, does that have an owner or is that a true stray dog? And I got the distinct impression. He was this, calling dibs. Right, yeah, this was not this was not a rescue situation in the traditional sense. This was a like culinary adventure this man wished to embark on with said canine. Um, so, yeah. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah. I don't think I have it in me to eat it because I'm just yeah. deeply devoted to dogs because I was raised that way. But yeah. I do wonder if I would have similar inclinations would I feel differently if I lived in that culture because I'll eat deer <coughs> excuse me I will eat deer meat here and yeah that might <coughs> I think the argument forget about all the mushy gushy stuff about how you know we love dogs and dogs love us or we think they do by the way disturbing fact about dogs hmm. one of my brother yeah I know this is so sad I'm, I'm about to, this is not sunny side up material but it's going in one of my brothers who I'll leave nameless informed me that there, you can look this up if you if you wish to go down this gruesome trail, but that it is very common for dogs, maybe cats too, but for sure for dogs to eat their owners if they die, like in the house with them. Like after a period of time, they just like kind of eat them. Like that's a pretty common thing. Never heard. That. I know the the particular brother that shared this with me. Um, he, his brain is maybe even more unusual than mine. So Well, and he says it's a common thing, but the scenario of a human dying in its house and staying there long enough for the dog right. to it's have its way. It's an uncommon way. situation. But yeah, they're saying, so, like, in those situations, which aren't common, it is relatively heard of. It's not an unheard of thing that it has for the dog happened. to begin to feast upon its master. Which could be, like, again, in dog culture. So, like, there's African tribes uh, I remember reading about where... The wife, the last thing she does with her husband, if her husband husband kicks the bucket, um, and like the cannibal tribes, the, she will prepare uh, like a stew made out of her hubby's flesh. And um, in one of the books I was reading when I was a kid, because I was very fascinated by like, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, indigenous folks. What am I thinking of? Primitive. Primitive uh, and indigenous folk. Um, she claimed it was the most she'd ever enjoyed her husband was the meal. That she made out of him. Um, so, um, <laughs> anyhow, all this to say, you're right, different cultures, different foods. And my only line, because I want to be open-minded and I'd like to try, uh, you know, I think the Japanese eat a lot of weird stuff, but I, want, I like trying some of their food. I think it's fantastic. Um, I think I, dr- I have a little bit of a struggle with animals that regularly eat meat, right? So, eating other carnivores? Eating other carnivores. And I don't know why that is, but I think I feel like that's that's kind of my general line. So fish eat meat. They eat But bug. they eat other fish. We don't And really... bugs. And That's fair. So fish are carnivores and But we we don't really count fish. Pigs eat Pigs eat anything. Uh-huh. I know. Like they're that's om- a good that's a good place to put your dead bodies. Pig farm. That's that's true. Yeah. yeah they'll yeah, dispose yeah. of it. So but yeah, Probably the safest approach to if you're going to eat meat is to eat the herbivorous, the the grass eating. Yeah. Maybe that's why, like, you know, the stricter religions, the more, uh, what is is that called when you're. We're going to follow the dietary constraints of what. That's how we'll shop our faith. (laughs) (laughs) Find me the religion that feeds me the things I like. That's right. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. Like, who's got the peanut M&Ms in their their (laughs) charter? That's the cult I'm joining. I want bacon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not sure, but I think that the issue with pork is they don't have exocrine glands, they don't sweat. Right. So all their toxins are still in their flesh, which. Partially would explain the, the flavorfulness. Sweat, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. salty, delicious bacon. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't know if that's completely accurate. I don't well, want to. I, I didn't make it up. My but upper I'm, lip. I didn't when I'm on a sweaty it. day, I mean, making bacon, baby. Making bacon, baby. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm. I feel that what you just said. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. It makes sense. Why it'd be so delicious. Yeah.
Hello, lovely friends. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And it would mean the world if you would tell other people about this podcast and maybe even spam your social media accounts with just how much you're enjoying it. If you are, of course. Also, commenting and rating us on whatever platform you're downloading or streaming from is incredibly helpful to a little startup podcast like this one. On the other hand, if you are dissatisfied with your listening experience, please leave all of that hate on someone else's podcast, just maybe to confuse them a little bit, right? But most of all, we hope you keep looking up and looking for the sunny side of life.